Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of War and Infinite Panels. You're, jo you're joined by your two lovely co-hosts, Matthew Paul, also known as Getsilius, and we're going by Jules Chan, who apparently his real name is Jules Chan. <laughs> ah, yes, both lovely co-hosts. Uh, well, we know that only one of us is lovely. Don't do this to me. I work really hard at getting my hair done today. <laughs> Which no one will see, dang it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So anyway, what is on the agenda today, Matt? Yeah. So this time, uh, we I was lucky to get a chance to be given uh, a preview copy of an up upcoming comic done by Fabian Lelay. Uh, you may know him as the co-creator of Jade Street Productions, produced by Black Mass earlier um, last year. And now he's got another series coming out in his belt. It's known as We Are the Danger. So it's this to give you a nice synopsis of it. It's a I want to say it's a musical drama series, which uh, deals which deals with apparently what's it like to have a revenge band. <laughs> it's basically if anyone has ever started their own brand or their own art series project just to spite somebody, eh, you'll know you'll know what this feels like. I mean, I've kind of done this before for less than for less than uh, altruistic reasons. And but this one, it seems like, oh, it's just genuinely a bunch of friends who really want to get into a band. And even though the start of that was because one of them was was I think she was fired from the band because she couldn't take it anymore with her with uh, the with, with her with her uh, with her bandmate. Oh, no, no. She was like, nope, I had it. And then she just like and left and then which uh, pissed off her manager which you'll read later in the series in the preview with Logan, and she's like, I'm getting revenge on you. Which, by the way, makes me laugh because uh, her name is Logan. She freaks out like Logan from, uh, from the X, you know, X Men. So I wonder, it's like, I wonder if there's a genetic difference between the two. Would she start busting her claws and like slashing like everyone when she does get her way? You know, when I actually saw that Logan guy, it's like, does every guy named Logan have a beard? Well, she doesn't have a beard, so we're very happy for that. So if I could give a syn if I could you know give a synopsis on it as well, okay. I'm just I'm totally not gonna read this from Black Mass Studios. <clears throat> <laughs> Starting the as the new girl in your senior year of high school is never easy, and Julie is having a terrible first day until she meets Tabitha. After a night out at a rock show, their friendship quickly grows, and before you know it, the two form a band with their sights set on. A record deal. They just need to win in a nationwide battle of the band's competition. With Tabitha's rival keen to keep the pri to take the prize for herself, it's a battle not to be missed. Yeah, Bye, I, kinda... <laughs> I can't believe that you actually uh, went on the internet for that. It's so awful. Yeah, uh, if you've been around enough radio heads, you know uh, you know enough to actually emulate uh, their speaking pattern. Although I kind of. I kind of fracked up with that one uh, when it came to the parts where you, where you emote the most. But yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think anyone's here familiar. Anyone here is familiar with a broadcast voice. True. I think I think my only um, so my opinion of reading it so far, the story is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's very fluid. Even oh, with yeah. um, right, there are several um, parts where the story is told between Julie and Tabitha. Well, you notice the panel space is just goes to a different color. Uh, Jules and I had different op different opinions of it. I lean towards the idea that it's trying to express more emotion. And Jules, in your opinion about the panels being just straight up normal colors, what's your opinion of it? Uh, it's just that I have this problem when it comes to, I just have this uh this disdain of uh gradient backgrounds because. How do I explain this? I get that it's a preview, so maybe this is just something that can be fixed later on, but it's just, um, it almost gives off a sign that's kind of lazy. Now, most of these are very small panels, so it won't, it's not that bad. It's not that, it's not that bad. It's just when it's a big panel and then the background is blank. Yeah, that, that's kind of, that doesn't do much for me, especially when... But seeing how the art style is a bit more simplistic, I can see what they're going for. And you're right. When I think about it now, when 
at least it's a different color. So, okay, it is trying to maybe convey emotion or something. Yeah, like, um, I think the scene when they found their, I guess, their second guitarist, uh, the the other the other punk chick in the ponytails, and, well, I can't say punk goth, well, whatever, she's a ponytail, and they, when she's playing the guitar, instead of using, I would say, uh, anime powers, you know, anime, anime comic lines, you see act, action lines drifting towards or away from them showing they're ripping it, it's just a nice uh, collage of hue of orange and yellow to show like the melody of the music making you more into tune with it so i could that's what it to me it's more of a design thing but yeah i can see it considered lazy because if you jules have you seen saga by uh brian k vaughn and piano staples I, lately i've seen the cover <laughs> you've seen the cover have, and, and, and later on in the series of like issue 40 plus you will notice there's a tons and tons of backgrounds which is like Little to no color whatsoever explain the story. You'd be like, there's a tree, now it's just all green. Uh, but In that sense, I can see where you say it looks lazy, actual... because here's Fiona Staples drawing these lovely backgrounds, describing back what the character's happening, and it's just like, boop, it's all red, all green, all blue. It's like every panel being that way just to make sure the issue finishes. The story's still good, but it kind of ruins the aspect of the uh, exterior and and the looks like the the background and the foreground the character is so yeah like it's a minor quibble but uh compared to everyone else everything else it's it's fine um i do like uh, a lot of the character i do like tabitha's character design i also like uh, her brother's character design and julie i mean the art style is fine um it's just that one aspect that bothered me but um yeah. Although the ones with the action lines and also when they're when they're playing their music, it's like that one I can get. Also, like uh, when uh, when Julie is playing her music and then the lyrics in the background, I always think of that as a good effect. Although the problem with um, the problem with the problem with having music having a musical of having a musical comic like a comic centered around music is that. We're reading lyrics. We're not exactly hearing music, so some of that majesty is kind of lost. But again, uh, you mentioned before that, the, uh, and even just from by the description, this is more about interpersonal relationships and, and uh, yeah, music. Yeah, because a lot of musical drama series or even series of that nature, you get to understand by the interplay between the people what it means. Like, um, I'm trying to remember. It was a good one. Was it not Beck? No, it was 44. Uh, I'm trying to think what was it. Dang. Yeah, Beck, Mongolian Rap Squad. Like, I read the manga as a kid, even though I didn't get the music. It was pretty cool. Like, there are tons, not to get off record again, there's a manga out there called Descending Stories, which is about the old Japanese play art. I don't get any stories because I can't understand unless it's told to me, but you understand the drama and the emotion through the words. So it kind of, it, it kind of, once for once, it's really the medium. I mean, unless, unless Fabian decides to say, hey, um, I'm going to write and do this entire story as an interactive visual novel experience. Then he has to learn programming and music and all that jazz. And that's a whole different medium. Well, <clears throat> I, like you said, it's about, it's more about what they're going through rather than their, I'm rather than, uh, rather than just the music itself. I mean, unless, unless there's like a DVD or something that goes along with this music, like, no, I don't think so. Yeah, but but uh, but yeah, this this first issue is actually not that bad. Um, I like the characters so far. Um, uh, and I do love how near the end it just took one tweet to just just to just start to just start it all. Like, yep, this is a teenage drama. Yep, it all okay. and also it's about it's a battle between artists. Yep. I mean, technically yeah. speaking, to be fair, we live in that age where anything can sail and off. I mean, look at um, I mean, look, I mean, look at what happened. Look at what happened recently. I think it was like, like it takes like one tweet from like CNN to everyone that says, "Yo, like yo, more, like yo, Morgan Freeman is is you know got accused or what happened in Convoke recently." I think uh, Rob Liefeld's upset because a ruined tweet because he found because he wasn't like a he wasn't a. He wasn't a, a real cameo of a Deadpool too, and I'm like, that's all it takes, like that's, these days. So yeah, to be set off by a tweet or something like that, that's all it takes these days. 
one thing to push you over the edge. It's all all you all you need is like, like, actually no, that kind of makes sending out a uh like it's on kind of kind of thing exactly yeah, a it's... lot easier. It's like normally you'd have to spray paint that sh- that you have to spray paint that stuff on your enemy's wall or something or on their house, but nowadays it's just like oh no, you just have to tweet something uh, passive aggressive. <laughs> and the one thing I'm actually surprised is I've. Um, I've seen Fabian's prior works, uh, like I said, uh, for his commissions that he has, uh, I believe on his DeviantArt and Facebook page. Um, he's done coloring his own, and luckily for this for this series, he has a col- he has a colorist, uh, Claudia Agarin. I'm really hoping I'm butchering that name pro- incorrectly, but yeah, uh, Claudia's coloring is really, 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 really superb. It's very, it's very light. It's, it's very mood setting. Even in the beginning of the series, that you're in a nightclub at a concert, it doesn't really feel as dark and gringy as you expect it to be. It feels a lot more lively, even with, with the compact space that Fabian has drawn all the characters to be in. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of got like a, a miss. Uh, I'm got like a, I kind of got like a Miss Marvel feel from it, like uh, with the coloring, it like where everything. Even where you think it would be dark or something, it actually is very vibrant. It's light. Every you can see everything, and I always like that. Where in in this industry, like how many times do we see artists and inkers and pencilers go drunk off shadows? Where oh it's God! Like, yes. It's like, oh my gosh, is Organization Thirteen attacking? <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I know. I agree with that one hundred percent. But yeah. I think that's definitely this this coloring and it really helps the story get compact. And I think that this the first issue comes out um, if you guys listen to hopefully this comes out on time. The first issue comes out May thirtieth, uh, twenty eighteen. So definitely give it a check out when you give a chance. I'll probably be looking into it. I'm I don't know if this is gonna be a mini or a full fledged, you know, like two year three year series but it definitely it definitely has a potential to go both ways because the story is compact enough where it can be told within six plus issues but it also has enough wiggle room because it's a musical drama of this type of nature of you know get you know being a battle of the bands you compete with people learning road trips all the all the jazz that comes with it it definitely could be much longer like you know what if they win it and then they go super big and they learn to deal with record deals and whatever and etc and especially the one the one character I want to learn more about is the other guitarist with the hair that his face is going over. Uh, not to be mean, but he looks like evil hentai guy. He looks like hentai guy. Oh, and I hope that's not his name. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Like, unless, but let's hope it doesn't go that way because it, if that's the case, then oh my gosh, this is going to get dark super fast. Yeah. Because this, thing... this this comic comes out as very lighthearted and stuff, and then oh no, we're we're gonna turn, we're we're gonna take a page, we're gonna take a page from Japan, and we're gonna include rape somehow. No, 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 no. I meant that he looks like hentai guy. Not not he's gonna do that. Like he looks like hentai, guy. because in 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 hentai series of manga, the 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 guy has every dude that's doing whatever has no face, no eyes, nothing. He's just not there. Ah, he looks like hentai yes. guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Where and the other thing is, creeper I, in the background. Yeah, creeper in the background. Yeah. The funny thing is, the Tabitha design looks like um, looks reminds me a lot of uh, Kachu design from Strangers in Paradise, which is really nice. But the thing is, Kachu is much more stocky. She looks much more comfortable in her body fit. So I definitely, definitely looking loving Tab, um, Tabitha's design as a character compared to I mean, not to be mean to Molly, but yeah. It's like I think I think Tapitha's design stuck out the most. I mean, yeah. it, it's like her faded blonde hair and everything. Her, but I guess her like her energy, just like as a character, just like yeah, yeah her d- energy yeah. as a character, yeah. and also, and also she's full on for just forming a band with Julie instead of her her yeah. old stuck up band. And I think Julie, I, Julie's fine. It's just uh, she's. How do I say this? Uh, usual main character, very ill offensive kind of thing. Like that's fine. Like she's she. Uh, I, I also, although when I first read this and she was getting overwhelmed in in the crowd of of uh, 
of of the bar or uh the show house it's like yeah the, the concert yeah, yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel I kind of feel for her because I don't do well in those situations either. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, she doesn't leave that much of an impression outside of ah, she, she, uh, she, uh, she found some friends and now they're forming a band. It's like oh, this is sweet. I mean, it Pretty. is a sweet story. And and then until the tweet comes in and then oh, it's on. Yep, this is a spite band. <laughs> now, now, how long before they start before they start making condescending tweets of their own at each other? Well, maybe that's the next issue. Maybe, maybe he'll read him serious. We are the danger. We are the social media. <laughs> yep. But anyway, no, 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 that's... no. We are, we are the shit post. We are the shit post. Oh god. But honestly, though, I definitely have high hope for the series. I'll definitely follow checking it out. Once it comes out to trade, you can definitely uh, depend on myself and Jules to maybe give it a full fledged review. But it's definitely has it definitely has its foot in the right place. It's a very very good intro series, and I think that honestly I was afraid because I thought that with because uh, all the musical comics that are out there now is I believe is the Backstagers you have um, Backstagers and Josie the Pussycats and Josie the Pussycats is already completed so you just have the Backstagers so there's enough space to be two different type of musical comics that are out there. There are probably more, but I can't think of them right now. Yeah, I usually I'm usually not all that interested in uh in uh music musical comics. I mean unless there's like a a superhero y comic book y uh twist to it. <laughs> yeah. Mainly yes. because there's not I mean, again, we're we're mostly we're mostly reading a story. We're not listening to music in on itself and usually in music based shows or anything, it's usually the music that draws you in. Like like for example, when when we saw you remember the episode of Danny Phantom when we first saw Ember McLean? Oh yeah. Yeah, that the one of the many things aside from her amazing design was her music. And also we kept bringing her back and she instantly yeah. became a fan favorite. Whereas with with this I mean, it's probably very Microphone much muted. the focus is their interpersonal relationship. It stands out more. And I hope that really grows even more. But, and it uh, depends uh, like, also with have... the, the, the rest of the relationship with the band, like their motivation to joining, et cetera, et cetera. But like I said, this show has definitely, this one's a show. The laws of the TV <laughs> show, I watch it too. Um, this comic definitely has a chance if it's just grow, to grow into something more and bigger. Um, I definitely am looking forward to the following issues following up with this. And, uh, yeah, you guys should definitely check it out when you can find your local comic book store. It's printed by Black Mask, so um, if your store doesn't carry Black Mask, just ask in a special order to get a copy of it. Because I know, I know Black Mask is coming up. They've recently been getting more and more issues. I think I've recently seen the last Black Mask series I think I've seen on shelves was Young Terrorist. And I think that... That, that says a lot because the last time I heard of Black Mask, to be honest with you, was Fabian Lillet's first work of um, Chase Street Productions, which was a, I believe, a four issue series. I believe I didn't really have a chance to keep up with it because of production schedule. It was like after issue two, it was like every, every if you checked on like preview, you know, comic.com previews, it was like TBD, TBD. So. I blame myself for not keeping up with it because anytime I see TBD, TBD, I think image, and it's like, oh no, this is the image problem. I've got to wait like 10 months for another issue, and I hope I still remember what I read. Yeah, I was saying it was like, that's, uh, that's something I, that's something, that's, that's always the one thing I've always dreaded reading independent comic books. It's like, you know, you get a different slice of the industry and everything, but scheduling is completely different from mainstream comics that, Jules, I know you are, you, you, you read more often than if anything. I read more often. I think you. I think you ha look. Let's put it this way: you have a bigger DC pull list than I do, and I'm pre. And that's because you and Dan Didio are tight. <laughs> yeah, tight in the sense that I want to ring a noose around his neck. Hey, hey, hey! That's that's not that's Gently. not an outright that's not an outright threat. That that, that that's, that's, that's a <laughs> metaphor. That's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Anyway, um, that's my final thoughts. I guess that's our final thoughts on the um. We are the danger. Again, check it out when you have a chance. It'll be released May 30th, 2018, and I hope you guys enjoy the comic books as we have. Yep, hope you enjoy. 
Also, if yes, if 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 you keep hearing that name, we are the danger zone, and you feel the need to play danger zone. Wait, no, we are the danger, and you feel the need to play danger zone. Then you're not crazy. I had that same effect. <laughs> Actually, maybe, also, maybe that's a subplot. That's what he's trying to do. Out of nowhere, you see Danger Zone. Danger Zone! And that's just the whole thing. We're done. All right, guys. See ya. See ya.